Apple just unveiled the new 13 inch M3 MacBook Air and the new 15 inch M3 MacBook Air and these aren't them. These are only here to illustrate a point because these are both the M2 versions of the MacBook Air and the new M3 versions look exactly the same as this 15 inch MacBook Air and exactly the same as this 13 inch MacBook Air. But there are some changes here on the inside that go beyond just a new M3 chip and an interesting feature on this MacBook Air that has not been on any of the other Apple Silicon MacBook Air. So I wanna tell you all about what's new with this M3 MacBook Air and also talk about the MacBook Air lineup just in general because Apple decided to keep the M2 MacBook Air in the lineup at a reduced price point. So you might actually wanna go for that option instead of this new M3 version and also, when you're comparing this MacBook Air against the other MacBooks in Apple's lineup, there may be an unorthodox option that may have every single feature you want, and I'll tell you about that at the end of the video. But first of all, let's cover what's new with the M3 MacBook Air. And first of all, you already know it's an M3 chip, right? There are no outward external changes on the MacBook Air. It even comes in the same four colors. Although there is one change that Apple really didn't highlight uh, about the MacBook Air, and that is that for this midnight version, you know, this infamous one that gets really fingerprinty, you can even see that mine is covered in fingerprints after owning it for well over a year at this point. And that is a new anodization process on the midnight MacBook Air, which Apple says should help reduce this fingerprint issue. Again, we saw that on the Space Black MacBook Pro, and it seemed to work pretty well, so that is a welcome addition, especially for the midnight version. But obviously, the new thing for this MacBook Air is obviously the chip. It's an M3 chip moving up from the uh, M2 chip. This is now on the three nanometer process, so I'm actually curious to see if we see any reduced heat on this fanless M3 MacBook Air design. But the one thing that I wanna like caution is that I don't think this is going to be like a revolutionary upgrade or even as much of an upgrade as we saw on the uh, M3 MacBook Pros and especially the Pro and Max variants of that model because Apple is saying that for the MacBook Air, we're only gonna see a 1.6X improvement compared to the M1 MacBook Air, not even the M2 MacBook Air. So this thing isn't even two times faster than the original MacBook Air. So don't expect like a major performance difference with this model. But again, the M1 MacBook Air is really speedy. The M2 MacBook Air is really speedy. This M3 MacBook Air, especially for, you know, the consumer base it's targeting, is gonna be really powerful. And if you're comparing that to Apple's Intel MacBook Airs, they're saying it's 13 times faster than their old Intel MacBook Air. So again, these things are crazy powerful and it's gonna have the same uh, battery life rating at 18 hours for both the 13 inch and the 15 inch model. The thing I find really interesting though about the M3 MacBook Air is Apple touting its AI features. So they are saying that this is the best consumer grade laptop for AI. And it's really interesting because if you look at the website, there are mentions of AI everywhere. Apple even has this little blurb here saying that uh, AI features can help with users doing their homework from AI math assistance and good notes to automatically enhancing photos in Pixelmator Pro to removing background noise from videos in the uh, CapCut app. So yeah, Apple is really touting the AI features of this laptop. Obviously the M3 chip has a neural engine in it, which is pretty capable. And even Tim Cook has kind of been like, saying just wait for iOS 18, there's gonna be a ton of AI features in there. And obviously just AI has taken over the tech industry with the amount of hype it's like generating. So I'm kind of looking at this M3 chip, looking at the wording here on the spec pages, and I'm kind of you know figuring out that I think the next version of macOS is probably gonna have some AI features because right now they're kind of touting like third-party apps that can take advantage of this. But I, I really feel like if they're leaning this heavily towards the AI performance of the M3 chip, we're probably gonna see some interesting AI features coming to Apple natively uh, on all of their platforms. So this is kind of like further confirmation of that. But yeah, that is basically what's kind of new here with the MacBook Air. It's basically an M3 chip. You're getting faster Wi-Fi 6E networking, which is nice. And then you're also getting, and this is perhaps the most interesting feature because this has not been on the M1 or M2 MacBook Airs or even the recently released M3 MacBook Pro. And that is for the first time on a base level M M3 chip, I guess, 
uh, you can now support up to two external monitors. So before the M1 and M2, and again, even that M3 MacBook Pro, which is already out, were limited to just one external display at a time. But Apple is saying you can connect up to two external displays on the M3 MacBook Air, as long as this lid is closed. So if this is open, it'll support one external display and then the internal display. But if this is closed, you can support two external displays. So that's actually a really nice feature. It's something uh, the base model M series chips has been missing for a while. Stuff that has prevented people from actually buying these laptops because they use a multi-monitor setup. So if you don't mind your laptop lid closed, you can now support two external displays, which I I'll take, right? That's a nice feature to have. You I could definitely recommend this laptop to a lot more people now. But yeah, there's no reason to fluff this out, right? New annotization process, new M3 chip, support for two external monitors and Wi-Fi 6C for faster networking. And then of course, of course, you know, the M3 chip is also coming to the 15 inch MacBook Air with all of those same features. Obviously Apple debuted the 15 inch MacBook Air later. It didn't come out when the original M2 MacBook Air launched. So if you forgot this option existed, you can now get a larger MacBook Air, which again is nice for this lineup. But let's talk about this lineup in general. So this M3, 13 inch version is gonna start at $1,099. That's the same as last time. And then this 15 inch model is gonna start at $1,299. Again, the same from last time. Just like previous models, the base model starts with a weaker M3 chip. So it has an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU. If you spend hundred dollars more, you can upgrade that to an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. Probably honestly not worth it for like an M3 MacBook Air if you're just going for the base model. And then of course you can max this out at 24 gigabytes of memory and up to two terabytes of storage. One interesting thing to note is that when Apple released the M3 entry level MacBook Pro, it started at 512 gigabytes of storage, but this M3 MacBook Air still just starts at 256 gigabytes of storage. And if it's like the M2 model, it probably means that these SSDs are gonna be slower on the base model because it's only using one chip. So you need to be made aware of that uh, when you're ordering a MacBook Air. And even though both versions of this laptop don't have fans in them, the 15 inch actually gets a little bit more performance just because it is a larger body. So it helps dissipate heat more from the M3 chip than the smaller body of the M3 MacBook Air. So you get some nice benefits going for the 15 inch version besides just kind of like that larger display. So the 15 inch MacBook Air, I really like a lot. Uh, but let's talk about the rest of this lineup for the MacBook Air because Apple also decided to drop the M1 MacBook Air. That was the version with the old design. Uh, but in its place, they kept around the M2 MacBook Air and reduced its price point to $999. So it's basically $100 cheaper than the M3 version of the MacBook Air. Now that not, might not sound like a lot, right? Like you spend $100 more and you get a faster M3 chip and you get Wi-Fi 6E and you get support for dual external monitors with the lid close. And honestly, yeah, I think I would probably make that trade off, right? Like $100 more for some more features, a more advanced chip. It, it's probably the right call. But again, if you're on a budget, and not necessarily from Apple's website, I would say wait until uh, you see the M2 MacBook Air get like a discount from third-party retailers. Like it's often on sale at third-party websites like Best Buy or Amazon uh, for $899 or something like that. That M2 MacBook Air is a great deal, even at $1,000, right? If you really don't need like dual monitor support, honestly, the M3 chip probably isn't gonna be that much faster than the M2 chip, right? Like it's still a very capable machine. If you're really on a budget, especially in the education market where this is gonna be $899 for the M2 version, uh, it's probably a really, really good deal. So I just wanna let you know that the M2 version is still in the lineup. If you really need a budget option for a MacBook, that might be the one to go for. That's all basically to say that I feel like there's really no wrong option here uh, if you're buying a MacBook Air. You just have to make some choices on, you know, which model you wanna get, but they're all really good models. And most importantly, Apple, you know, getting rid of the M1 MacBook Air and bringing this modern design down to a base $1,000 price point, I think is just a really great move, right? That's, that's great. They had to get rid of that old design. They bring this down to a $1,000 price point with the M2 chip in it. Great move, uh, you know, that's a great laptop for a lot of people and again, that one's probably gonna be discounted on third party retailers and that's when it's really gonna become a really good deal. Uh, but even though we're talking about the MacBook Air, I do wanna offer another suggestion for a laptop you might wanna purchase. Now, don't get me wrong, these are great laptops. I would have no problem recommending any of the MacBook Air models to anyone looking for one, right? They are powerful, they have great battery life, they're slim, they're light, really excellent laptops. And with this new M3 version, it fixes like a major flaw that the old ones have, and it can now support up to two external displays. All that stuff is great, right? But 
you might want to actually consider an M3 MacBook Pro instead. And the reason I say that is because, number one, uh, the M3 MacBook Pro, the 14-inch version, has, uh, you know, a fan inside of it, so it helps with sustained performance. So even though these are great laptops, and again, they're, they're more than powerful enough for most people. If you need faster pro level performance, if, you, if you're running you know, intensive apps like Final Cut Pro, uh, you're probably gonna do better with something like an M3 MacBook Pro. But even besides that, I would say like the biggest feature that the M3 MacBook Pro has going for it is that it has a mini LED display in it. And it's a 120 hertz display. It's just a fantastic looking display that even a lot of consumers can appreciate if they're watching like HDR content. And also, the M3 MacBook Pro has more ports on it, right? So it has those two Thunderbolt ports, but then it also has, uh, you know, the MagSafe charger and then an SD card slot and an HDMI port, which a lot of people would like, right? So, you know, when you're looking at that M3 MacBook Pro, I think it might be a better option over these M3 MacBook Airs, uh, but not at the price point it's at now, right? Because it's like $1,600 for that M3 MacBook Pro. So that's a huge step up if we're looking at it from the base level M3 MacBook Air. But the thing I would say is look at Apple's refurbished website. They have that M3 MacBook Pro there for around $1,300, I believe, and it comes with 512 gigabytes of storage. So that's only about like two to $300 away from the base level M3 MacBook Air. And if you were going to upgrade the storage on this model, again, it only comes with 256 gigabytes of storage, that's really close. And I would say for the features, the display, the port on that M3 MacBook Pro, if you can get it on Apple's refurbished website, and again, these are like, they look like brand new MacBooks, right? I would say that might be the option to go for. But again, th there's no wrong choice here, right? You just gotta look at the features, decide if you want a new laptop or a used laptop, whatever, right? Like I'm just giving it, it to you as like another option available uh, in Apple's MacBook lineup. And, and I guess the one thing I would say about that M3 MacBook Pro is that the new Air supports two external displays, but there's no mention of if that MacBook Pro, which has the same M3 chip in it as this Air, will have that same feature where you can close the lid and then get two external displays. Apple just lists it as one external display for now. So who knows if that feature's coming maybe through a software update or if there's like some special chip or something in this MacBook Air that allows that to happen. I don't know, but it, it is a weird feature distinction between those laptops, which may make this MacBook Air better. But anyway, that is what's new with the new M3 MacBook Air. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, please give me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as you can probably tell with this video, cause I stumbled a little bit from time to time, it's early in the morning. Apple like releases at 8 a.m. I'm tired. I didn't even have time to make a proper coffee. I'm drinking like a Starbucks espresso can. So that's my dedication to you. So you're welcome.